Hi guys. All right. How are we all doing? Okay. Welcome to the Isaac Show once again. Um, it's great to be here with you all. Um, so today our guest um, um, is a really special person. Um, he's a guru in the um, real estate sector, you know, across Africa. Um, we're bringing him on shortly. Hello, Said. Great to have you around. Hello, Ayade. Um, thanks for joining. Thanks for signing up. I'm waving right back. Awesome. Awesome. Great to have you guys. I mean, you should also feel free to leave your where you are joining us from. That would be amazing. I mean, let us know exactly where you are tuning in from. Waving right back. All right, day. Nice to see you here. Okay. Okay. So we'll be starting shortly. Um, trust me, it's going to be explosive today. Uh, the person we are having on is someone I personally respect a lot. Um, he's an advisor. He's, he's, um, he's like a, a, a big brother, a mentor, and all of that, you know. So I uh, will bring him up um, very, very, very shortly. But just a little reminder. The simple aim and intention of the Isaac Show is to actually raise doers, you know, to make consumers, you know, become producers, you know, to make ordinary people become creators and innovators. All right. So that's why uh, we do this. All right. So I'll bring in um, uh, Mr. Oloron Shea shortly. Okay. I can see his requests. Um, hello, Emmanuel. Thanks for joining. Hello, Ifi. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Sunday is live. Yeah, how, um, how are yeah. you? I am very, very well. I'm doing awesome. How are you doing today, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for having me here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah. Today is Mr. Sunday's wife's birthday. So please, if you can leave a happy birthday message for her down there i would really appreciate it you know just wish her a happy birthday trust me she's an amazing woman who has supported this man for years if you know his story you understand what i'm talking about but we share you can say that of, again <laughs> to share part of it uh, today today okay so let's get osas hi Corey, welcome great to have you guys around um you one day nice to see you here um Emmanuel, thank you. Oh wow. Mr. Nia Detoya, thank you for joining. Wow. Sister Tosin Craig, Tifa inspires. That's the woman that inspires me right there. <laughs> okay, so let's get this started. Um, let's just go straight into it. Okay, so uh Mr. Sunday, thank you so much once again for joining us. Um yeah, thank incredibly you. yeah, incredibly amazing. Thank you so much. All right, so you've, you've built one of the most successful, to be candid, um, real estate companies out of Africa, you know, and we're, we're really excited to have you here today. So we'll start with that story. Of course, I know I've had this, a conversation with you about this before. Um, of course, for the purpose of this platform, we will delve into back into it, you know. So um, for the purpose of this audience, you know, we will, let, let's just begin. Let's begin with the early days of pertinence. I'll tell us okay. exactly. I know you shared this story over and over again, probably, <laughs> but, but tell us how it's all started. It's a partner group. Um, for the benefit of the viewers, Partner Group is um, one of the leading real estate companies in Africa, not just Nigeria. You know, they have over 3,000 staff across the board. Uh, they actually broke out most of the biggest real estate deals uh, in the continent. Um, and of course, it's, it's, it's um, not just about the money, but in terms of, um, in terms of resources, like um, they are one of the companies that actually do a lot of um, moving the mighty things around, you know. So, um, but of course, you will delve into that um, shortly. So that's um, partners. They are also the owners of um, ABC Gardens, you know, and many other popular real estate um, um, projects that you see around across Lagos, across Nigeria. You know, um, so I used to say he's a very humble person, but the company is a multi billion company. You know, so that's what we're talking about. And, and I, I, I'm not sure he's, he's in his 50s yet, you know. Uh, so, so this is a young man in Nigeria, and he's amazing. So he's actually cutting across borders, you know, and uh, doing amazing business across the world. All right, yeah. so tell us exactly 
how it all started. I know you you now you run many businesses, multiple businesses, but I know it all started with Quartzness Group. Yeah. So how exactly did it all begin? All right. Uh, thank you, Isaac, for having me again. I'm in a celebration mood. My Today is my wife's birthday, so I'm so excited. And you know. <laughs> You just got it by saying um, when you have a woman that um, has been with you through the thick and the thin, yeah. then yeah. she deserves to be celebrated. So um, I value your platform too. That's why I don't have um, a choice than to be here today since you wanted me. Thank well, you so fine, much. Fine. I appreciate it's all in the spirit of celebration. Yeah. Uh, the pertinent story um, is a story we'll never be tired um, telling because. Um, it's amazing. You know, there's a way something can grow that uh, you will become a wonder to yourself. That, oh, wow. Can, you, know, you know you're going to succeed, but at times you might not know some things will come faster. So maybe you draw a five-year plan that I'm going to achieve this in five years. And what you structured for five years, you discover that by the second year, you're already, you're already doing better than that. Then you have to restructure for growth again and like that. So yeah. we're never tired of um, sharing the pertinent story. And uh, for us, it's a story of resilience. It's a story of um, purpose discovery. So if you ask me to share that story over and again, I will always take it back to discovery of purpose. You know, one of the easiest yeah. ways to become wealthy in life is to find what you enjoy doing and get people to pay you to do the same thing. So this is what you love doing. Whether you get paid or not, you will do. Now you discover this thing and you are doing it so well that people are willing yeah. to pay you to do the same thing. And that's the summary of the pertinent story. It's a story of um, purpose discovery. Um, the, what we know as the pertinence group today started with two um, young guys. And all we had when we started was a dream. We had passion. We had um, a clear direction of where we're going to. We had no money. There was no resources. You know, when people say you start from ground zero, I think ours was worse than ground zero because we're even owing. It might not be anything significant, but it's we're owing. So we needed to pay uh, the people we are owing and so many bills here and there that we could not yeah. sustain. And here we are, yeah. all we had then was a vision and a clear direction of yeah. where we wanted to go to. So the pertinent story is the story yeah. of enterprise development and the story of people development or people empowerment. Enterprise development, people empowerment. Uh, we set out, we, when we set out in business, just like every other um, young entrepreneur, start off. We had the desire to solve problems and wanted to make money because for every businessman, those two must be your goal. You want to solve problems. And when you solve enough problems, you make enough money. The size of the problem you solve determines the kind of resources that comes to you. So if you are solving problems at the local level, the best you can get is local income. So when you move to the global stage and solve global problems, you earn global income. So it doesn't matter where you are starting from. It's not your location that determines your kind of income. It is the problem you are solving. So you can be in Agege. If you are solving problems that affect people all over the world, you will not earn Agege income. You will earn global income. So we have that mentality. So we set our to solve problems and to make money. We did not shy away from the fact that we wanted to make money because if you are in business and you are not out to make money, that business is not sustainable. Even a charity organization needs money to be sustainable. So if you are in business and you are Absolutely. not out to make money, I don't know how you want to sustain that business. So we made it clear. We wanted to make money. But we need to know how to make this money, but not just make the money, ensure that the money keeps coming. You know, we wanted to attain financial freedom. We wanted independence from any kind of financial struggles or burden. So we needed to know yeah. how. And what yeah. we did from the, at the beginning of the business was to craft out that how. You know, in business, people did not celebrate you for copying other people. What people celebrate about you is your uniqueness, what makes you different. So we needed to know what makes us different amongst every other person doing real estate. We started with real estate as a business, but we made it clear from the beginning that our business wasn't primarily real estate that our business is enterprise development and people empowerment. So when we started, right. even though we had money, we invested so much of our time, our treasures, our talent, our energy into people. 
we told ourselves yeah. we were starting with a small business, but we wanted to be a foundation upon which many other businesses will spring up. And today we are glad to say that from our business, we have a lot of businesses that, you know, has come out of our business and they are doing very well. We have gone to a number of places to commission businesses for our guys that were working with us uh, before now and now they are doing well in business. In terms of people empowerment also, we can proudly say we are achieving that goal because a number of people that came that they looked like a non-entity when they came. They are celebrities today. People have gotten cars, so giving out over 100 cars. People have gone to Dubai, over 150 people. Has gone, what am I saying? Over 300, sorry. <laughs> over 300 has gone to Dubai. On an expensive wow. trip. But all of this started with having interest in people. It's about people, people, yeah. people, people. So invested yeah. our time in raising people. So that's just the summary of the President's story. Okay, so one of the things I know about uh, President's, because I, of course I want, I, I want us to go into the nitty gritty. Um, and the reason is because um, one of the cardinal uh, purposes of this show um, is to actually bet faith in people, you know, because uh, we realize that when people have faith, they're able to do things. Yeah, one of the reasons why you have people going back to their graveyards with their latent potential is because they never believe they could do the things that they actually are capable of doing. So, um, I know, uh, one of the things I know about your story is the fact that um, yeah, Partners Group actually started from a shop, like a one, <laughs> a one, like, like a one, well, it could be a lock up shop, right? It was started from a lock up shop in a home job, right? Exactly. Um, you guys were you were fresh graduates, of course. You had worked, I mean, you, you spent a few years working for a real estate firm in um, Farah, and then you came back to Lagos. You know, you had your your, your wife was still your girlfriend then, um, from the least I know about your story, and then you started in a cubicle in a one one lock up shop, you know, and then today, um, I mean, we are talking about revenues of, I mean, in, in multi billion. So, how exactly did you um, transition from that lock up shop, you know, into um, when the things started making sense, you know? Um, how did you sell your first land? How did you get your first deal, you know? So, so for especially for the purposes of um, people who are looking to go into this line of business, you know, how exactly did you broker? That's initial uh, piece. All right, thank you very much. Um, you just said it rightly. We started from what we call a cubicle uh, lockup shop. We had a complex yeah. of like seventy shops in that complex, and we had one of those shops those days, and that was where we started. But I want to make this clear to you: we resumed physically in that shop, but our mind wasn't there ever. So it means whatever level you see now that we are thanking God for and we are celebrating, uh, yeah. we saw it then and even beyond. That's why we keep telling people it's still a process. The kind of success to be yeah. celebrated is still we are at. So when people say, wow, you guys have done well, we're like, man, we are nowhere. We are not up to 5% in the journey because the picture we saw when we started, yeah. we are not even anywhere close yeah. to it. So it's still a journey. That's why yeah. we're still working very hard. When people ask me, why do you still put in so much effort? And I, I just like, I'm nowhere close to where we're going. So I want to start from there. You might be in a cubicle, okay. but see yourself in a skyscraper. For us, we were in a yeah. cubicle, but we had pictures painted of skyscrapers. For the guys that joined us in the year one of the business, the early months of the business, if you ask any one of them yeah. that what was the picture we painted in their mind of what our corporate head office will look like, they will not blink, they will not think twice before responding. They know that even when we're in that cubicle, we kept telling them that the corporate head office would be a twin tower. And each of these would be 25 story each. We have not done that yet. Of course, what we have now is just five floors. And uh, it's, uh, we, what we picture. So it means we are still one who are five of what we plan. Yeah. Going to well, to Let's keep going. Doing 12, yeah. 25 story each. So when people are saying you have done well, we are like, no, we are not anywhere close to where we are going. So it starts from there. You might be in a cubicle, but please see yourself in a skyscraper. 
we saw ourselves here because success is first within, then without. Whatever your mind cannot picture, your hand might not be able to handle. So for us, Absolutely. that was the starting point. We were in the cubicle, but the transition took place first in our mind. We started seeing ourselves beyond that cubicle. So the steps we took were skyscraper steps, not cubicle steps. The people we were trying to connect with, we didn't connect with cubicle people. So even though we're in that lock-up shop, we ensure that our minds were open enough to opportunities that will move us from that place to the next level. Of course, mm. primarily, just like I said earlier, we discovered purpose. So it became clear to us why we were in business. And that should be the primary driving force for every entrepreneur. Why are you in business? Make it clear. And that will keep pushing you. So even when people are celebrating you, it won't get into your head at all because you keep telling yeah, yourself, hey, I'm not anywhere near the picture that has been painted about my future. So for us, it took place in the mind. I would just, that's the summary of it all. Every other strategy that we might be talking about, they are all in the process while we journey. But the first thing, our mind, we were able to conceive it. So because it was in our mind, it was easy for our hands to answer do it and that has been the driving force that has been pushing us up to where we are right now and just like i said what is our head is bigger than what we're saying now interesting interesting okay so um um i i know that um, in addition to um what you've said and uh, and then uh, how we started this whole um story i know that um you, you actually broke out your first deal um i think with a okay. with a first set of of land. I mean, you got a plot of land yeah. from somebody. I don't know. Here, can you? Can you? Can you? I mean, okay, okay. Can you tell that, us? Let me now talk about that. Yeah. About, about I, that. I I normally yeah. share with people. Hmm? For every ten million naira vision you have, there's always a ten thousand naira version of that vision. You must understand that. We had a big picture of what we wanted to achieve, but we needed to start from somewhere. So our first real estate deal, we had no money. We only had that so how did it some land to sell some. Okay. Of course, before then, we've been marketing real estate for a company that is being owned by our mentor, and we have learned okay. a lot. So we didn't just dabble into the business. No, we have mm. been experienced. We sat down with okay. him several times. In fact, at the point when we wanted to learn, he said he, for him to seriously, he didn't need he, he didn't need our money. Just wanted the commitment. Okay. from us. He said we should pay a certain amount and we paid and we kept okay. learning about real estate. Because we made so you got your first clear. set of land from this man without paying at all? No, not from him. I'm going somewhere. I'm just trying to help you know okay. that okay. we didn't just stumble on real estate. We knew we were going into real estate, okay. so we decided to learn. So we started by selling for him and also come around yeah. him to learn. So one of the greatest benefits um, we got from that is that most of the failures that he went through he shared with us. So we avoided mm -hmm. it was when we were starting. And that was mm -hmm. the purpose for us when we started. So and that's the important we got somebody that wanted to sell land. We went there and to realize we only had two acres and we felt this is too small for us. And we asked, can we get more? He introduced us to someone that could get 17 acres. And you know it's of the mind, like I said, we did not have money for even one plus then. But we negotiated as though we had the money to pay for the entire 17 acres. So when we got through with the negotiation and it was time okay. to pay, that was when we now made it clear to them that, see, we are passionate we have what it takes. What you need is money. We have what it takes to generate this money. Can you give us some time so we can start marketing this land? Just like sign a contract together and we will not fail on our own part. Then we'll be able to raise your money for you. And they said we should get at least a million naira. I remember we couldn't even raise the one million. We managed to go get two fifty thousand. Went back to renegotiate again. Eventually they allowed us, you know, and the entrepreneurial spirit in us came alive. How can you reach people? How can you sell this land? And that was how we started. So if you're hearing that people started businesses without capital, that's how it starts. You negotiate first. Then you go and think of how to raise the money to be able to pay for what you have negotiated for. But if you don't have a deal on ground, what are you raising money for? So, and that's why I tell people, when you want to start business, maybe you want to start selling 
um, whatever. An office or a shop is not the first thing. What do you want to sell? Do you have the product? Do you have the services? Don't invest so much in fixing offices and you don't have the product. Or you are not sure that your product or service will be in high demand and you have spent mm. so much in the setting of the or business. That's very important. important. Exactly. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so you, so you got... So I also see the, I also see the importance of uh, trust and integrity in broking this your first deal because uh, I believe that if, if this person in question didn't trust you or didn't think that um, you had some form of integrity, it would have given you this um, land that it sold and then brought back the money and then were able to kind of leverage to then get more and more and more. Okay, so now, um, what, what, what would you say? What would you say? Um, because you, um, since you started, you've been talking about um, the fact that. What actually helped you to move from that level to the next level was your mindset, you know. So now, of course, I know many people. Or of course, we all know people who actually read a lot, you know. But they are still they still feel stuck, you know. So, what would you say made the difference for you? Like I've I've, I've known you since the days of um, of Foursquare, you know, yeah. Joyce and you know, and all of that. I wouldn't say. I mean, I'm, I mean. Without being uh, to be fair to them, I wouldn't say everyone has your kind of results in their respective fields now, right? So, aside the fact that you were dreaming big, what would you say gave you the leverage or gave you the upper hand, you know, to deliver different results at that level and that point? All right, thank you very much. I will summarize it as saying that uh, I was willing to fail. I was mm. willing to fail. Now, the challenge is, it's not always the most intelligent that will become the most successful. It's always the most dear. How much are you willing to dear things? For most of the times, people want to achieve great things, but they are afraid of failures. Go and ask any successful person. It's possible that the number of times they have failed supersedes the number of successes they've achieved. But once you start succeeding, the success will yeah, overshadow all of the failures. It has been said that failure is not a person. It's just an event. If you see failure from that perspective, whenever you want to dear things and something tells you what if it fails, you need to respond by saying what if it succeeds. So when you fix your eyes on what you are likely to get, when you succeed, then you want to try anything. So I think it's all about action. I talk, but I do less of talking and more of acting. You know, we are in the generation where knowledge is increasing every day. And when you talk about yeah. uh, people, they read books, they have information. If you check out during the lockdown, that's when you know that people can teach in Nigeria. All manner of things going on on social media, here and there, different lectures here and there. And I told someone, I said, see, I expect that many people should have MBA automatically from the lockdown. <laughs> All the people that we should have paid to listen to, they were teaching us, we were just listening here and there. At the end of the day, I just wish True. one of them just came and said, for those of you that don't have MBA, for all of these teachings that you have gotten, get this certificate. So, you know a lot. But it's not how much you know. What are you doing with what you know? Yeah. The challenge yeah. is people know so much, but they are not willing to take that step that will look like they are going to fail. So for yeah. me, I was willing to fail. So I kept trying things, and I had I have my many failures. People are taking me as a laughing stock at some point. Some people have looked down on me when things weren't working, but that wasn't my business. I focused on my focus. Because if you focus on your focus, that's when you can become the focus. So for me, I did not allow distraction. Regardless of my socioeconomic status and the environmental factors that were working against me, I kept on working. So do less of talking and take steps. Don't mind failures. Don't worry. The more you feel, the better you become. 
If you even lose money, don't worry. When you lose money, see it as you have paid school fees. Whatever you lost in the course of building whatever. Don't see it as a loss. Tell yourself, I only paid school fees so that I can become better. And that is it. For me, the secret is about willingness to fail. But listen to me, if you are willing to fail, you won't fail. You will eventually succeed. It's just that that will prepare you to take action regardless of the circumstances that you find yourself. So that's it for me. Okay, so let's talk about real estate, which is which which was your first. I know you're into diverse businesses now, which is another another question entirely. You know, um, but I mean, you started with real estate in Nigeria. Like uh, I, I remember um, when they used to share real estate flyer when that when that was the norm. Then you yeah. guys were you know, the first people to actually and it spent, I mean to penetrate that market heavily, right? So. Now, do you think that um, in your own view as an expert in that industry, do you think uh, real estate is still a very valuable business now? That's one. And secondly, if um, if um, a viewer, I mean, one of the people watching us right now, um, actually um, has it in mind or is currently wants a startup that's into the real estate business, what, what, what are the things you would tell him to do differently, right, based on hindsight, based on the lessons you've learned, you know, to increase his chances of success, basically? All right. Um, to start with... Uh, oh, Thank you. Yeah, continue. All right. So to start with, um, talking about real estate, real estate is more like when if you, if you read the Bible, you say Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Real estate has always been a viable business. It's still a viable business and will always be a viable business. Wow. It's obvious. Interesting. Now, if you look at the world today, if you did a little of geography, one of the things you will learn in your geography class is how that the Earth has not less than 70% of water and only about 30% of what we have on the Earth is land. That's oh, yeah. I know we have been trying as humans to reclaim land, but what, per what percentage have we reclaimed since we have been reclaiming all the garbage and the like? But listen to me, yeah. even when we reclaim, we reclaim it for the rich, not for the poor. So you understand that. Mm. So no Absolutely. poor man buys water by the beach. You understand? That buys land by the beach. So that is one. Yeah. So it means the resources, as far as land is concerned, it starts. It keeps reducing every day. So the more people buy land, the land is not increasing. The only way to increase land is when you build skyscrapers. So you keep building. And that's why yeah. you see cities, especially in the developed climes, they keep building skyscrapers because the land is not yeah. increasing. So anytime you are going into any business, that supply uh, yeah. will always be less than demand. Or demand is always higher than supply. Just know that mm -hmm. it is a viable business. So if you are listening to me mm -hmm. right now and you want to go into real estate, I encourage you to do that. One of the things that stands us out in business is the fact that we have supported so many people to even start real estate business. We have gone to open offices for people that left us to start real estate. So it's our joy. Wow. We do that because we know that the opportunities in real estate is very vast. Since mm. I came into the real estate industry, I've been hearing that housing deficit challenge in Nigeria is not less than 17 million. Right now, I know it's going to be over 20 million. Do you observe that real estate companies keeps increasing? Yes, the housing deficit challenge keeps going up. That will let you know how viable it is. All everything we are doing put together has not been able to solve even ten percent of the housing deficit challenge. Instead, it keeps going up. So that's what let you know mm. real estate is a good business. But you need to ask yourself, right. what kind of real estate business do I want to do? Because what mm. fits one might not fit you. So the fact that. Sunday Alonso is doing real estate. You don't have to do his own kind of real estate if you are not wired for it or if you have not grown capacity to be able to do that kind of real estate. But investing in real estate, I think it's a must for everyone. If you check out the most successful people and the most valued people all over the world today, regardless of what business that they do, 
they still invest in real estate. They own some of the choices and the most expensive real estate all over the world. That will let you know the importance of investing in real estate. So you can choose to be an investor in the real estate sector. You can choose to go into estate development the way we are doing it. You can choose to just buy and hold and sell later. There are different. We don't have time to analyze all the kind of real estate we can do. As small as buying a space and using it as car park is going to real estate. As much as going to places that look like remote, nobody is buying land there. That was how we yeah. started. Some of the plots of land we bought for as well as 50,000. Some of them sell for more mm -hmm. than a million naira now. So imagine that's different. It's huge. So if you have invested like 10 million into that kind of project, and what you bought at 50,000 and sells for over a million, of course, it takes time. It's a process. Very important. So real estate is viable, and I will encourage you to go into it. But the advice I will now give to you is ensure that you identify your uniqueness. As you are coming into the industry, come with a unique strategy. If you come in to struggle with um, a market that is already looking saturated without a USP, there are higher chances that you might not succeed big. You will definitely succeed, but it might not be big. So if you are coming into real estate yeah. today, why not look at those of us that have been doing it? What is it that we are not doing well? That you want, or when you come in that you want to do better? Just pick a unique thank you the market it's just, it's just a matter of time it's really. then secondly if you are going to do real estate you need to be re re resilient too the business can be tough especially if you want to do the kind of let's say that we are into it can be tough so you need a lot of resilience because of course that's if you are doing it in nigeria especially lagos and places around lagos where you have issues with um how to buy a genuine land documentation and infrastructural challenges but in all of this, as challenging as it is, I will tell you it's one of the most rewarding business too. So if you are called for it, please go for it. But even if you are not going into a real estate business, be a real estate investor, you will never investor. go wrong. I can tell you that over and again. You can't go wrong with it with real estate. Especially when I invest in past years. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, so my next question. So um, 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 I was listening to a very, very powerful message. Um, a woman I respect so much, Kukwa Oshika, just um, a few days back, you know. Okay. Uh, it was, it was, a, it was um, a message she delivered at a, at a particular conference. And she was talking about lands that she bought when she started okay. business you know she made, made measure of two instances you know one of one of it actually you know literally blasted i mean blasted my my brain i'm like wow you know so she said she bought this particular um i think her husband gave her the land her husband bought the land that um is it 500 nera that's really cool. um, that kind of ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about in this lucky area, I mean lucky Aja area. And then she said when she sold when they when they sold the land, uh, she was gonna use the land for business, and then they sold the land a few years afterwards. And uh, it was a few it was a few a few plot of lands. So it was a few billion naira. You know, so the, the, the difference for me was astronomical. It was it was um, it was really disruptive. It was it was it was not um, it was not you, you couldn't calculate it. You know, mm. so how is it that this happens? And um, can you tell us about one or two deals that um, I mean, what has been your best real estate deals? Yeah, I think I think that's you know in this uh, in this context. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I'll just share a few things. Since um, you told me that this platform is to challenge people and we should yeah, all hold back. So I'll just share a few Absolutely. things. And, uh, right. Now, Fantastic. Now the example you gave about Ibukun Awoshika happens every day with the smart guys when it comes to real estate. The challenge most of us have is that your dream land is in Banana Island. But what you can afford right now is in Cassava Island. So rather than invest in Cassava Island, why you look forward to owning your dream land in Banana Island? Sometimes. And you are waiting for resources to be able to afford Banana Island. Mm. You never be able to 
get it. Okay? So what I tell you, while you look forward to that dreamland in Banana Island, start investing in Cassava Island. That was how we started. Mm. Today we mm. do these real estate deals of multi millions. Yearly we do real estate deals in billions. But we started mm. with those places that weren't looking attractive. So mm. why some of our peers that wanted to go into real estate, they were trying to get those big deals. There's nothing bad about it. If you have the right strategy, you can start getting yeah. the strategy. If you have the right strategy yeah. and they are well positioned and you have built the network, why not start with the high end market? For us, we started there. And I gave example, I said some of the plots we bought as well as 50,000. They are selling for as high as 1 million. Now, real estate is very interesting. You said one of my most interesting deals. Okay, let me just share an example. In the midst of this lockdown, someone called me and uh, said uh, there is there are this plot of land they wanted to sell and that uh, the person needed money badly, badly, I mean badly, that if I wouldn't mind. So I sent someone to go check the place. And when they told me somewhere close to a location where we have properties, and I know we sell our uh, land here for not less than 10 million, and this person happens to need money badly and he wanted to sell for 2.5 million. So Jesus, said, wow, Jesus Christ. Why are you busy talking? Someone already bought two plots. The remaining seven plots, I raised money immediately, discussed with someone, and we sent the money to that, for them for that seven plot. Listen to me. In four days, like, listen to me. The investment was done like on Monday. As I thought day of that week, four plots had been sold, and none of it was sold for less than five million naira. Wow. That is real estate for you. I'm not saying it happens like that every day, but you said I can get some of the interesting real estate deals. So why do you are busy complaining in the midst of the lockdown? That is <laughs> so, so just selling four plots has already paid for the cost of wow. the land and even profit. So the remaining three plots is profit that's real estate for you just be positioned but please learn so that you understand how to broker the best of deals how to do negotiation how to talk to the right mm -hmm. people how to ensure the document is right so that you won't be swindled once all of that is clear for the real estate is the main deal any day and i will encourage anybody to go into it i will encourage anybody so those are some of my interesting deals i just shared with you so what ibuka ushika said imagine some of those plans that i said fifty thousand i would want it's still going to get to one billion two billion sometimes in the future it might be 10 years it might be 20 years but that's the way this thing works that's the way it works so basically if you can't delay gratification you can't do real estate business no you can't you and you can't, can't profit from real estate business so um we know about we know about um, numerous successful businesses that you run and that you serve on i know you serve on board of many you know businesses you know who they want you founded and not um can you tell us about one or two that you actually started and failed that didn't work out Oh, oh if, at all, if at all, have you started any business that did not work out? I mean, can you share just one story about a business started that failed? And what happened? How did you take it? All right. Now, when you talk about businesses that did not work, I'll start by saying we have started a number that did not work. And even in the, in the midst of the business that is working, we have initiated projects too that failed. You need to know that the fact that you failed in business, <laughs> like I said, it's just an event. It's not a person. You are. It's just two things. You are getting smarter and wiser. For example, when we started, yeah, we're into absolutely. transport business. We invested in transport business. We even attracted investors into it. So. I designed a business plan for us to work with, and that business plan showed that we have been able to analyze the risks that are inherent in transport business, and we felt we have put in place um, mitigation against those risks. So we spoke to a few people, and they decided to invest in the transport business. We bought the buses, trained drivers, did a number of things. But listen to me, that business flop, it was a total, a colossal, a colossal failure, as in a disaster. Why? But you what know happened? one thing that we did? Of course. Okay. Now, number one, 
people when it comes to transport business one you need time for it if you want to do transport business and you have not put in place a system that can manage people effectively then it will be difficult for you to succeed in transport business as at when we started a transport business we didn't have a system in place for example, if i'm to do transport business today now there are a number of things i would do differently number one uh the challenge we have in nigeria let me just say this people are complaining that they are jobless or they want to start business they don't have money and there are people that have too much money but they've been dealt with by people so they would rather go and keep their money in the bank or in one mm. safe place than invest it in people that invest that in businesses. Yeah. Them. you know that's the problem because we have in nigeria experience. As at now, yeah. it should not be having an unemployment challenge. It should not be significant because the money we have in the hand of some people can put, can give jobs to thousands, can help many people start businesses. But simply because Absolutely. it's been beaten and battered. So for us in the transport business, if I'm to do it now, I'll do it in a better way. I can't run a transport business now and all the vehicles that we are using for the business will not have trackers in them. So that by time, we'll be able to track wherever the vehicles are, what they are doing, and like that. We didn't have all of that in place. So we have to be running after the drivers, is whatever they tell you, they come to tell all manner of stories. At the point we change it to the higher purchase model, you discover that when they start, they will be doing well. After three months, you know, there's a lot of, the major challenge was human factor that flopped that business. Mm -hmm. so we're going to do it now. But imagine, as a businessman, Interesting. If I have trustworthy people working, that money that I'm investing to do trackers, the money I'm investing to put in on yeah. necessary things because I want to monitor people. If I'd invested it in the business, oh. wouldn't I employ more people? Okay. That's the challenge we have in Africa. So if you see some okay. big businesses bringing um, people from outside to come and manage their business, mm -hmm. it's because of some of these experiences. Found that those ones, they are their culture is a bit better. That's not to say we don't have trustworthy yeah. people. In fact, today, the reason why we are succeeding at getting this group is because we have trustworthy people working with us. But for the transport business, it's flopped because um, we did not have the right people. But listen to that, we did not fail. Um, we did not fail to deliver to our investors. I want to challenge you. Okay, so and you have have investors partner you all right if, if you lose everything don't lose your investors money okay we so I, I everything we... possible yeah to pay all the investors back oh we, we can we can barely hear you now at this point the okay the network oh my wow. oh, how is it now um we just went up at the points can you how hear you me do? though yeah i can hear you clearly went up at a point can you hear me yes I okay can, I can, I can. um i am i'm beginning to hear you in faces it's not it's not coming clear like it was before and that's so painful wow. because wow. you're saying a lot of things that we say. but i can hear you clearly okay it's better now it's better now last we can, we can yeah continue. i can hear you clearly it's better now i can so i can continue i can hear the last thing yes okay. yes you can continue now yeah so like as the failure is started from people we had the wrong set why we started investing from that point in people we started growing people that's why if i'm just talking about our success rate in pertinence today i will relate it to people the quality of people, people. we have in our team now then we did not have mm. good quality that kind of quality. okay so, so it affected the business so it yeah. failed but we did not fail our investors I want to emphasize mm. that if you're an entrepreneur yeah. and somebody partners with you invest in your business, please do everything possible. Don't lose your investor's fund. And that was what we Absolutely. did with the transport business. And that gave more credibility. Absolutely. Some of those guys continued doing business with us because they saw that the business failed, but their own money would hmm. remain intact. So that's one of the failures. And there are many more. Time may not allow us to talk about it. <laughs> of course. Of course. In fact, it's, it's like the time is running very fast today. I don't know why. It's already, can you imagine? It's already 6.46. Yeah. Okay. So now, exactly. you, you, you've talked about the, you've talked about the heart and soul of your businesses that have worked. And I've, one thing I've noticed consistently, 
has been the place of people, people, people. For personal group people, you build people and then you build the business, right? Yeah. So, what would you say is your course? Of course, and of course, I don't think any business can get built without people because um, a business is built to a degree of the quality of people in that business. So, but what's your biggest recipe when it comes to developing and building people that will build great businesses? Yes. What's your strategy to doing this? All right, uh, I'll just put it this way so that um, it can answer the question from different angles too. For us, the model All right. adopted is, it has four, um, it's standing on four legs. The first one is leadership. The second is systems. The third is technology. Why the fourth one is people. Now, ensure that you have the right leadership if you are putting in place any business structure. For us, we invested time in developing ourselves as the kind of leaders that we command followership. That is very important because leadership is about influencing people to achieve goals that has been set. So for us, we ensured that we invested time in making ourselves transformational leaders, leaders that people will want to pattern after, leaders that people will want to learn from. You don't need money to do this at all. That has nothing yeah. to do with money. It's about capacity yeah. building. And we started from that. So you need the right leadership. If you need quality people, make yourself a quality person first. Because when you become a quality person, you attract quality people. So that was there. So people wanted to do what we have done. They wanted to be like us. So they joined our... Um, awesome. The next one is system. When you are bringing people into your business, are you helping them see the role you're playing? Are you painting a picture for them that they cannot see themselves in that future? When you paint a picture of the future, let them see themselves there. So in building our systems, we built it around the people too. That's why I've been out of the country for about five months now, and yet business is running. Effort is better. In fact, they are making more money now that I'm not at home than when I'm at home. That's to let you know. So for us, we build systems, and we ensure that as we build the systems, we allow people to see the role that it will be playing in the system that we have built. So if your business is built around you, your family, me, myself, and I, it's going to be limited. So the business will always need you for it to try. But if you are not selfish and you are open to people, it will be easier for your business to grow. The third one, of course, is technology. Um, yeah. That we started adopting about five years ago, and we have been invested heavily, and we are still investing in technology. Because one of the things, because in this age, if you are doing business and you are not adopting technology, if you are not deploying technology or whatever you are doing, then you are going also the very soon. So once yeah. you have the right leadership, you put systems in place, huh, and you adopt technology, it will be easier for you to grow the right set of people to run that business. So that is our own strategy and every business i start from now i follow this template that we have created and it has been mm -hmm. amazing amazing okay so now um um i i think in life in life basically our, our biggest our, our our greatest assets really of course money is very very important and money is good but i believe that our greatest assets is really not just uh the bank balance you know but our relationships the quality of relationships that we have you know and um, for you of course you spoke about the person that gave you your first land you know that you sold when you started president and on and on and on like you spoke about it so um who would you say were the people that helped you you know the most that way that were like um support out of your visions of your dreams you know that have helped you to swap to, to the heights that you are today what would you say what would you say was was their was their, their roles you know in bringing you here all right thank you very much uh for me um i value relationships so much and it would be difficult for me to say this particular person or people is an accumulation of um, relationships that have been built over the years. But and I can tell you that today, a bulk of the things that comes to me without stress in business, they come because I've built quality relationships over the years. So some of the guys that have known me for many years, someone like you now, you've known me for quite a number of years now. So whatever I'm doing has your endorsement. I don't need to struggle. As at when you knew me, 
if I yeah. add a product that is worth 10 million, you might not be able to afford it then. But now, yeah. if you can afford it, you will not blink an eye before you buy from it because you can say, I have known this person yeah. over the years. Yeah. So I would say Absolutely. it's an accumulation of different relationships that has been built, that has influenced the, the kind of business we are running now. And that's why if you talk about part of the things that are unique to me and to everything that I do is, um, number one, I've been able to build trust through good character over the years. And for me, reputational capital has paid off, to be sincere. People just buy into things that I do most of the time because they know me that we can trust this guy. So you build the right yeah right rotation true good character yeah so that is um very very important then the second one is also the quality of the relationship that i've built yeah so i can start a business today and i have a wide network of people that can yeah. partner with me collaborate with me to make that business yeah. fly so it's difficult to say one for example my most valued relationships yeah. were relationships i started over 20 years ago from the days i was mm -hmm. in a church um holding leadership positions those are some of my most valued leadership relationships is, yeah i must tell you from those days back of course i've met people now yeah. but i celebrate people that have been with me over the years than people that just stumble into me now of course i've learned from a number of people that's when you have to talk about business now people that are guiding me in business we have a number of them that are supporting us in business so for me take relationships seriously at all levels people higher than you your colleagues and even your subordinates because at some point it will answer for you awesome awesome um so so now let's talk about uh, of course the 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 cocoa um, money let's talk about money um especially when it comes to investments you know i know you're into um, real estate uh, you're into technology um and i know um usually people actually come to invest their money with you and with your company now how do you invest your own money do you do you put all your monies into all your businesses or do you also put some of your money into other businesses what's your what's your multiplication replication strategy what's your investment strategy as a person you know, and also for your company basically all right thank you very much um we attract investment and investors from different parts of the world and even Nigeria. And just like I said yeah. earlier, our commitment has always been to our investors, ensured, ensuring that we don't mess up with their fund at any point, yeah. at any time. So that, for yeah. me, my personal investment strategy is invest 70% into the things that I have control over and 30% into other people or other things that I might not be fully in control. So before now, we keep teaching people about um, financial planning. I've been in the financial planning or uh, fund management industry for about 15 years now. and because of that i see that the more we teach people the more they ask questions about we know the product where are platforms so we start creating platforms and that's why those things you mentioned today if you go to petisave.com or you download the app we have a microfinance bank that takes care of people's savings and help them grow uh, finances. We have real best for people that want to invest in real estate and get return. You have technology, we help people um, develop technology solutions. We have real estate yeah. for land and houses. I mean, agriculture yeah. today now and is doing amazingly well. People are attracting investors from everywhere. Now, yeah. All of these platforms are places where we invest money. So what I'm trying to say is that we already have a basket of businesses that yeah. need funds to scale, to multiply, and to generate return yeah. for people. So that makes it easy. Whatever fund we attract, we have businesses, we have platforms that we have grown. I didn't even mention all. We have host now now. It's, a, it's an hosting company also in the technology sector so many things we are doing right now so when funds come we have not less than um say eight solid businesses that can scale that can grow the resources we have with us but my personal investment strategy is i put 70 percent of my resources into things that i'm in control of and 30 percent i invest with other people so i invest in stocks i do uh, treasury bills 
all of those regular investment that people do it's important because when it comes to investment your objective should be clear are you investing for medium for short term or for long term once you decide your objective you cannot ask what vehicle what instrument do i need so okay, instruments are good for medium term and long term they are not good for short term so once you're able to yeah. set it out so you know what instrument to use for um, any level of investment that you want to do so that's my personal investment strategy Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so now let's talk about um, your profile. Uh, you have three master's degree, um, <laughs> interestingly, and then you are on the board of um, a number of um, organizations, multiple organizations. And of course, I also know that you are you are also on the board of AfriLend, you know, which is... Um, um, now, now, I mean, without sounding... Sincerely, like I, especially when I was going through your profile, I didn't wonder how exactly you achieve your excellence, you know, uh, maintaining each and every one of these um, responsibilities because you have to deliver very well on each of them. How do you do it? You know, you are board of director here, you are you're also um, a CEO of uh, founder of Shop as Discount, which is a massive. Um, 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 outlets in so. Lagos, yeah. you know, yeah. how do you do all of this together? <laughs> uh, all right, thank you. All right, um, I'm done with two masters, I'm on the third one, and people keep asking me, What's all this? What's all this book, book, book? You know, don't worry, we're going somewhere, just like I said, people may not understand where you are going, so that's why they won't understand yeah. why you are doing what you are doing. So, I'm on the third masters, and uh, just like you said, I sit on the board of all of these companies, but it will interest you to know that I've structured my life in such a way that I'm able to manage everything. For example, family is very important to me. Family is everything to me. Today is my wife's birthday. I've been in the kitchen today. I've cooked for the entire family. We have set, <laughs> we have set table. Nice. We have nice. shared nice. Meals. Nice. We have done. Today, before no, I so you have to down now. One, I mean, how do we get started? Yeah. <laughs> I jumped from one training. Imagine my daughter had what she came. So Hello. Just, yeah, yeah, there is cake. Yeah, thank you very much. Good to see you. <laughs> now, like I said, I've been in the kitchen today. I've done cleaning of the house today. Before my wife put up, wow. I cleaned all the house, cook, set awesome. the place. Awesome. My children awesome. had some surprise gifts for her. They were still sleeping. Yeah. I got everything set to the cake and everything. Just that's to let you know that regardless of how busy I am, I create time for the family. I've been with them here when the lawn grows. I go with the lawn more. I clear the lawn when if I come visiting them during the snow. I use the snow blower, I, you know, just to ensure that I create time because no matter how busy I am, I need to create time for my family. So, what I want to yeah. do now is put a structure around what you are doing. I look at people at times when they say they are too busy. I'm wondering. Don't go to still has time to attend function. I, at least I still see one or two parties on social media. I still see him go to pay condolences to people. That's why I'll be seeing. I believe it's about structure. Invest in people. Yeah. Of course, uh, one of the greatest blessings to me, I would say, are the kind of people I have around me. So because I've systemized my yeah. life and I have people that we are working together, I don't have to do everything. But you know, it starts from the foundation. Yeah. What kind of foundation did yeah. you put in place? Is your foundation a selfish mm -hmm. one that people couldn't see themselves in the picture? People will stay with you if they see themselves in the picture of what you are yeah. doing. That way, yeah. whatever you are doing is not about you. It's about people. You are able to delegate. And some of the guys with me, they even do things better than I would do it. What makes you a good leader does not mean you are the best. You don't have to be the most intelligent. You don't have to be the smartest. Yeah. It's just the ability to mm. coordinate people, to help people find their own dreams. You find your, yours. Help them find theirs. It's as simple as that, and you keep growing. So me, the answer is in the way I've been able to structure my life. Also, while growing, I invested in raising people that can work with me and do the things that I can do and possibly even do it better. And I celebrate them for even doing it better. That way, I don't have any Amazing. stress on my life. I still do my responsibility as a father, as a son, I create time for my parents, like anything. I create time for everything. For my friends, you know, it's important. It's about structuring your life. If not, the life, life would be boring, you know, if it's all work, 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 board of directors, CEO, yeah. you know, that would be boring. There should be, I want more fun in my life. I'm trying to learn how to create more fun around my life. As I'm getting busier, I want to be full of fun also. Yeah. Very important. 
makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so we have uh, we have barely three minutes to go. Um, so I, I'm just going to okay. in, push in two more questions. Um, so um, right. I know you're not in Nigeria. You've not been in Nigeria for quite a while now since lockdown. Um, lockdown is working for exactly. me for you, rather. <laughs> you are locked down with your family now. <laughs> but then my question is, what's the? I know you are. I know you're not just there where you are in canada i know there are also the business sides to you so what exactly are you doing there okay this might go off in this is like in 20 seconds yeah all right that for us um, from the beginning we made it clear that pertinence is a global business if you check our mission statement that word is clearly written there so we started yeah. increasing our frontiers for like five six years now we have been traveling